Google has launched their flagship model Gemini 2.5 Pro and it is on the first rank of LMSYS Arena. A very quick first impression from Rishabh that I found very interesting. This is a thinking model. There is no thinking versus non-thinking mode. The tool usage of this model is really good. I think Rishabh tested it with SQL use case and other use cases. So definitely if you have got a rate limit eliminated, then you can explore this model furthermore. But this is a good model for tool usage. And a very interesting answer I found from this early impression is that this LLM answers with search grounding is now much, much better than um, like anything else before. So what is the search grounding? If you're not familiar with search grounding, if you go to AI studio and then, you know, just ask something. So for example, I can go ask who won the latest IPL between uh, Punjab and uh, Gujarat. Okay. So this is a question that I'm asking this model, but rather than just asking this model, I'm going to go here and then say grounded with Google search. So that means this model is doing what you want perplexity to do. It's going to go there and then take that information ground the final response based on that and get back to you. And according to Rishabh, this model is really, really good for this particular use case. And uh, you can see that um, on March 25th, this happened. Punjab Kings uh, won by 11 runs, which we can just quickly go here and then just even verify. So Punjab Kings won by 11 runs. And this model is absolutely good for search grounding, not just the rank, but from my test, I also found that this model is extremely good. I want to share with you what I feel about this model and what Google has shared about this model. So Google Gemini 2.5 Pro, the headline news is that this is the first model that has like breached 1443. So it is at a higher position than any other model on LMS's arena that ideally indicates that this model could be a really good model or at least aligns with human preference. But if you were to see what Google has launched, then you would understand that this model is stunning model. So in terms of a lot of benchmarks, this model is crushing the opponents. There is a recent benchmark that says that uh, humanity's last exam, this is from scale AI and this model has scored 18.8%. When you compare it with other models like Claude 3.5, 3.7 Sonnet, including extended thinking. So this is the thinking version, which is um, having, uh, you know, internal COT chain of thought. So even the 2.5 pro model, the model that we are talking about is a chain of thought model, the uh, thinking model. And I believe that this is extended thinking, not even normal thinking, because this model takes a lot of time going through internal monologue and then coming up with an answer. And you can see GPQA, this model is scored 84.0%. And you have got like other benchmarks, which is almost on par. And there are like a lot of other benchmarks where this model is extremely good. One particular benchmark that caught my eye for this particular model is that this model is the top model in terms of Ader's polyglot. So if you know Cursor, if you know like Klein, Ader is one another tool that a lot of people love to use because it is command line. So you can use it within your terminal and then use it. It's one of the stunning tools that you can have to improve your programming. It's like Claude code, but before Claude code. So Ader regularly publishes the benchmark and this model has scored 74 percent on the whole code uh, change like addressing writing the whole code and 68.6 percent on diff code diff and you can see that this is the only model that is scored on uh, like this particular score when you compare it with o3 mini uh, gemma uh, gpt 4.5 claude 3.7 sonnet with thinking grok 3 beta which is also including thinking and deep seek r1 which is kind of due at this point to r2 which is also so this is definitely a good model for coding so the rest of the video, if you see, I would have done a lot of coding related test also with this model. The other thing is this model is not just a simple text language model, but it is also a vision language, multimodal model to be precise. So you can see on MMMU, massive multilingual multimodal, uh, the understanding, this is a benchmark, the equivalent of MMLU, this model has scored 81.7%, just a single item, not even multiple attempts. And on uh, the MRCR, which is like a character recognition, this model has scored 91.5%. Now going into the real world example of what we understand, what others are saying, if you were to look at this particular model, I mean, there are a lot of benchmarks. You can definitely go see what Google has said, what kind of things that are happening. But in a small nutshell, the, this model uses techniques like reinforcement learning and chain of thought prompting post for post training improvement. And this model is definitely Google's current flagship model. This model is not going to be available on API yet. So this is an experimental model. Now, if you were to understand this model, so let's say the character recognition behavior. So there is this user called Furkan. He tested this model and then found out that for this particular task, uh, if you are from, uh, I don't know, like how it happens um, in the Western world, but if you are in India or, you know, any developing nation, most likely your answer sheet would look like this. 
there is this one box that the students have to either mark or they color it they make it solid and for this particular case uh, this model is one of the two models that scored really high and uh, claude 3.5 sonnet is the best one so it didn't make any mistake and gemini 2.5 pro the model that was launched today made only one mistake which is quite impressive given that there are like crosses there are like uh, solid ones something is not fully filled in so this is quite 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 good model now in terms of programming i've ran through this uh, i've uh, used couple of prompts with this model so one another prompt that i came across online from a twitter user called olaf is using this particular question i compared this with this model and also the other model from google's family so the question goes like this beth places four ice cubes in a frying pan at the start of the first minute then five at the start of second minute and some more at the start of third minute and none in the fourth minute so you are basically saying that there is a hot frying pan and there is this human called beth and who's placing this ice cubes if the average number of ice cubes per minute placed on the pan while it was frying a crispy egg so and you are also giving this detail that there is like a, it's frying the crispy egg was five how many whole ice cubes and this is a very important part of the question how many whole ice cubes can be found in the pan at the end of the third minute now 30 0 20 10 11 5 if you go ask this question to humans then you would understand there are two kinds of humans one somebody who would jump right into the problem and then be the math nerd and then start doing the calculation that oh i've got like 4 plus 5 plus 11 plus uh, something plus and then they will try to come up with this final answer that would say some average then you would see somebody else who would understand that this is a tricky question i'm like oh i've got a hot frying pan don't i and uh, if i put all these ice cubes what will happen on the hot frying pan obviously it would melt the ice then maybe like there is an extreme case who will calculate all the ice melting point all the temperature settings and all those things and then finally coming to the conclusion now if you were to see that both the google models got this answer very correctly so that's very interesting so both the models said this is the right answer the right answer is 0 and in this case b 0 and the difference is though one model from google which is gemini 2.4 flash thinking experimental model took 6 seconds this is a thinking model it took only 6 seconds to come up with this answer and the other model the latest model which we have got has taken 118 seconds almost 2 minutes to come up with the same answer the reason why it took a lot of time is if we expand the model of thought so you can see it is also doing all these things like what is x value so what is the value that you put in there and then finally it comes to the conclusion that okay so the number of whole ice cubes at the end of the third minute is likely to be zero and then it uh, says that you know it can be only zero because the ice cubes melt in hot frying pan so this is the model that took 6 seconds to come up with this answer now if you open this one now you can see that it goes into lot of different directions so it it tries to calculate you know what is the time that you put in that and what is like i think probably at some point it started understanding about the melting point and uh, you know at what point it melts um, what is the assumption that is stronger what is the assumption that is weaker it is calculating what happens here t melting point it becomes like this chemistry professor i'm not sure like uh, you know breaking bad as a good reference but it becomes that you know hardcore nerd and then try to come up with this final answer which ideally says that it is zero now while i don't have a complaint that this model is really good my biggest complaint about this model is this model seems to have a very deep seek r1 style thinking process where sometimes it goes so deep into thinking so it goes a lot of back and forth and then try to come up with a final answer which could have been answered maybe like you know at the one third of one fifth of the time so this could be really helpful for a lot of uh, higher end use cases but for for simple use cases i would say this model is overthinking maybe in human terms but there are other tests that i did that and i found this model really good so for example i gave a question saying create a p5 js simulation of four seasons for me to control with months based on india so my expectation is one it should understand how to do the pe5.js code second it should understand the months based in india and third it should give me a slider so these are the things that i'm expecting and zero shot like this is the only prompt it gave me the code and with this code this is what i got so i've got the simulator i don't know why the clouds are running around here but i've got january february march april may and uh, you can see until may i've got the season which is summer and somewhere around june i've got like monsoon and uh, which we generally don't call monsoon we call it rainy season but it is saying monsoon and 
there are like interesting observations also like for example here you can see that it is winter the color is also like that and once you go into summer so you have like a very clear good tree there is a lot of rain happening and once you go into monsoon or autumn you can see the color of the leaves also changing which is kind of like very interesting observation in my opinion like for a zero shot the model came up with this and then this is what i could see and which is stunning in my honest opinion the next prompt is another p5js prompt so this is another prompt that a lot of people have been trying to do it so this is a very simple prompt said generate a p5.js simulation of bouncing balls inside an octagon and make sure it obeys the laws of physics and again it gave me zero shot i ran it through this and i've got uh, i've got uh, an octagon 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so you have got the bouncing balls the balls are bouncing inside it and then uh, you've got like different sides uh, sizes of the ball and it reflects pretty good so you can see the reflection happening at every wall you don't see a lot of flickering and uh, even when something happens at the edge like the corner it is doing a pretty good job i didn't make the hexagon or uh, octagon in this case to rotate but i i would say that it does a pretty good job i went to an extreme of this particular use case and i said okay the ball has to hit the wall then the ball has to split into two and every time it splits into two it just keeps on multiplying something like you know the virus and then i wanted it to stop at 10 um, this is a particular extreme use case it did not do a good job here for for that use case but for a very simple prompt like this it did a pretty good job the next one is of another puzzle that i found on internet and i found it pretty fascinating that this model solved it while the other models could not so this is a riddle so i'm saying just simply riddle me this penny has five children the first is named january the second kid is named february her third kid third is called march fourth is april what is the name of the fifth and intentionally we have not given the question mark okay now for this prompt very interestingly this again this model has uh, done the right answer so it thought step by step and then it is rereading the final sentence carefully and it says by logic you know based on the pattern the logical next name would be may but the riddle ends with what is the name of the fifth and notice the structure it is not phrased as a typical question with a question mark like what is the name of the fifth child it is presented more like a statement and the riddle often plays on the assumption and because it is a riddle and because it is a dot it said what is the name which is very interesting because you know at the fundamental of these models you've got tokens right and the token could be like anything so if i if i copy this and go to something like a tick tokenizer tick tokenizer and then i go paste this uh, paste this one of course this content and you can see this 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 question mark is not even part of the fifth one okay so it comes separately like there is no question mark here the dot comes separately and uh, this is gpt40 we can use like different uh, tokenizer and then see as well but the main po point that i'm trying to make here is that this is what the llm see this is what you know the llms at the end of the day see and for an llm that just sees this to understand that there is no question mark there and this is a riddle and for that reason it has to give the right answer which is pretty fascinating in my opinion and uh, this model has done a pretty good job so this other model understands that this is a riddle and so it's trying to give me like a different answer which is not may okay but this has done a pretty good job of giving me the right answer which is what so there was another uh, prom prompt which i also found on internet which is something that people said that uh, only this model answered correctly i could not honestly verify the right answer for this i found it on hacker news so the question is there is three people in a circle each person has a positive integer floating above their heads such that each person can see the other two numbers but not on his not his own number so the sum of two of the numbers is equal to the third so the two numbers is equal to the third the first person is asked for his number he says that he doesn't know so right now he has not seen anybody else so he is he doesn't know the second person is asked for his number he says he doesn't know the third person is asked for his number he says that he doesn't know then the first person is asked for his number again he says 65 what is the product of the three numbers so it says okay there are three people and above them there are three numbers and then it um, it goes to you know try to understand how to formulate this and then kind of formulates right like uh, you have to know that there are the sum of the two numbers is equal to the third sum of two numbers two of the numbers is equal to the third and it it tries to formulate this and then come up with this answer so n1 is equal to n2 plus n3 so in that particular case n2 and n3 would be 26 plus 39 is equal to 65 
and then it finally gives me this answer 65910. I don't have a way to verify this at this particular point. If you're a mathematician, I would strongly encourage you to verify this and let me know. But I found this model like I'm going to like do more, more and test, but I don't want to you to wait for like 30 minutes watching my video. But I've, I will make a different video where I'll just have prompts and then the responses. And to be honest, like I am personally fascinated this by this model. My only complaint is that this model thinks a lot. If you are going to use it for production use cases, then you would spend a lot of money in terms of the chain of thought tokens because you are going to be charged for all of this, right? Yeah, Google is not going to give you this for free. So there is only one place, you know, where you have got a problem, which is it mod. It thinks a lot. So it's, you are going to spend a lot of money and we do not have the pricing detail because this is an experimental model. But otherwise, this model is stunning. This model is amazing. Google has really cooked something special. And I don't think this is like benchmark hacking or benchmark uh, hijacking, whatever that we would like to call. This is a truly leap forward model that uh, not just leapt forward in terms of LMS's arena, but also in my personal opinion, this model has done a pretty good job with 1 million tokens. The model already available on AI Studio for you to go ahead and then use it. So if you go to AI Studio and then you click the model, then you can see Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental 0325 and Google has promised that you're going to have better rate limits when you start using this model. So let me know what you feel about this model and I would love to know if you have got any benchmark that you want me to run it through and I would love to try different questions from different university exams and all those things. But for Google, Google, you have done something amazing. Only thing is it is not open source and I can't expect it to be open source. I would probably love to see DeepSeek R2 coming very soon and then beating all these models with another open source models. I can't wait that to happen. But for now, this is a great model. Go try out Gemini 2.5 Pro on AI Studio. See you in another video. Happy prompting.